Good afternoon. My name is Rich Nass. I am the brand director for the Embedded Group at Open Systems Media, and I am here for this week's installment of Five Minutes With. And this week, our five minutes takes us up to the Massachusetts area, where we talk to Jim Tung of the MathWorks. Uh, Jim is a fellow at the MathWorks. Hello, Jim. How are you? I'm fine, Rich. How are you? I am doing great, thank you. Okay, so we only have five minutes, so let me dive right into this. Um, we have talked for some time about a very popular subject these days, and it's popular for interesting reasons, and that would be development boards. Uh, and that's things like Raspberry Pi, Arduino, BeagleBone, and so on. Now, there are people in our in industry who think that these types of boards from a vendor's perspective are a complete waste of time because they end up in the hands of a hobbyist who may buy one of something at the end of the day or may buy nothing. But, and, and then at the other end of the spectrum, there are folks who think that these things are the greatest things since sliced bread because they have the potential to turn into a very large volume sale, and they believe that that's worth the time and the effort that they're putting in. Um, so what is your take on that? Is, is it worth the time and effort that somebody puts in or not? Well, certainly, these types of boards are, are more than addressing a hobbyist community. Um, certainly, a hobbyist and the maker community is certainly one aspect of the market, but certainly the use in school, students, labs, um, teaching co engineering concepts, it's very big there. And we're actually seeing an interesting trend where some of these boards are being used in this industry as well, um, either for concepts like IoT types of uh, systems or early idea generation across many types of industries. So I can't look at it from a hardware vendor standpoint because we're a software vendor, but certainly from an engineering market standpoint, it's a tremendous opportunity. Okay. So that brings up another point. Um, since you don't actually produce these development kits, the MathWorks has to make a determination on which ones they want to support, um, because I don't think it's really in, any, in the MathWorks' best interest to support all of them. So how do you make that decision? Who do you go with? Well, it's really demand-driven. Um, MathWorks spends a lot of time engaging the community, whether it's at maker fairs or it's at uh, meetups or on campus, um, dealing, with, de dealing with students and faculty who are working on capstone design projects, and obviously a lot of people from industry who uh, are discussing their use and intended use of uh, our products going into the future. So we get a lot of input about the types of hardware people want to see us supporting. And so we're, we're not at a loss for that kind of guidance. And beyond that, if you go to the MathWorks website, there's a spot for anybody to go in there and, and uh, request support for some hardware that we may not support yet. So there's a lot of input there. And I, and I guess I should point out also that it goes beyond things like Raspberry Pi or Arduino and BeagleBoard. It, it goes into, in general, um, low cost, high performance, and easily accessible hardware. Now those are, you know, we could argue about the performance of, uh, of Arduino and so on, but you also look at things like the, um, the sensor on the Microsoft Connect, or you think about Lego Mindstorm, or you think about the processing power in your iPhone or Android phone. Um, that's just there. It's there to be used, it's available and accessible, and the question is how can you leverage it either to learn engineering concepts or to design products? Okay, excellent. Um, okay, so let's continue down that path of uh, speaking of our youth. One of the things that I'm very aware of, and you probably are as well, is that we are not turning out nearly as many engineers in the U.S. as we had back in the heyday. Um, would you encourage young kids to go into a career of engineering, or is it um, not really what it's cracked up to be? I, I, I absolutely do. Um, encourage uh, kids to go into engineering. Um, it, there are several reasons for it. One of them is um, just the ability, and this has always been the case, the ability to build something and to build something that works and that does something cool and that improves people's lives. I mean, that, that, that's, just, that's just neat. Um, but at this particular time in engineering, with things like low-cost hardware, with things like uh, the software tools that are available to help engineering, um, and with the convergence of a lot of different technologies, where they're talking about controls, computer vision, um, data analytics, and, and sort of machine learning, all this stuff is coming together in a way that lets us 
build stuff we couldn't have thought of before. Okay, it, it, it brings the technology together in a way that just it just creates a huge opportunity for just building stuff that just will change the world, and and that's neat. I I love that phrase, change the world. I've heard that used a lot, you know, with engineering, and um, I I look at it the same way. Uh, I would love to I'd love to continue this discussion, but uh, our five minutes are up, Jim. So uh, thank you very much for your time. This has been a great discussion. Thanks a lot, Rich. I appreciate it. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye.